Hello. In this activity, we're going to talk about the life cycle of an activity. As you can see from the chart here, an Android application goes through many different states in its life cycle. So we'll start at the top here where it says activity starts. Now an activity is any kind of a screen that you can develop. Some people call them forms, some people call them screens, they're activities. So an activity goes through these uh, different cycles using special methods. So you can see them named here. There are seven of them. On create, on start, on resume, on pause, on stop, on destroy, and then there's also on restart. So the goal here is for us to go through these different cycles and see how the data and the behavior of our application is done. We've already seen the on create method in many of our applications. That's where the actual setup of many of the buttons happens. There's also an on start, which happens immediately after that. And then when we finally get to the center, we have the activity is running. So even though you might have an activity running, it's not always running. You think it's running, but sometimes it goes into the background. The user picks a different application to be the primary app at the moment. And even though you, you think yours is the most important app, it isn't, it goes away. Also, the power saving mode of your operating system can kill an app. It will shut down things that it considers non-essential. So when these two different things can happen, the application will go through a, a phase called the on pause stage. So when you go to on pause, there's actually a method that's called. When the person resumes your activity and calls it to the foreground, it goes to the resume activity. So why should you care about these different uh, methods and a life cycle of your application? It's because that the data that's on the screen must be saved during the on stop and restored during the restart process. You'll notice this that you might have a data entry form that's full of information and it's empty when it comes back to the foreground. Or you might have a score at a game and it's reset to the beginning. Or you might have a timer that's ticking along and it starts over. And so it feels like your application just was killed and restarted. This happens also when your application is turned from the vertical to the horizontal phase. And so it's, it's really frustrating for a new programmer to understand what's going on. And so the activity here, or this, this video here, is to guide you through these different uh, methods. And let's see if we can make them less intimidating. So what you see on the screen now is the final product of what we're going to do in the next few minutes. So this is the uh, simple text view that we've got and a button. So when I click the button, you can see that I have a click counter. So every time I click, I add one to the counter. Now the, uh, the trick here is that when you turn a app sideways, you rotate it, and then I adjust the actual app and reformat it to the horizontal way, you notice it still says at 12. So it's going to take some programming to make that help happen. Because if in a normal app you were to turn it sideways, you would lose this counter. And so we'll see this demonstrated and then we'll go through a, a, a more explanation on this.